Hello Jefferson friends, I'm back this week with another read aloud story for you during our time of remote learning. Um, this week I'm reading you one of my favorite stories, which I know I say a lot to the kids at school anyway, but it's true, I only like to read the best ones. But I'm reading this week uh, Saving Sweetness. It is by Diane Stanley and is illustrated by G. Brian Karras. It is a really fun story that has a lot of Southern sayings that might sound funny or strange, some good similes and idioms. I do hope you'll enjoy it. I do have to say before we start that I am reading and recording and publishing this book online with the permission of the publisher Puffin Books. So here is Saving Sweetness by Diane Stanley. Out in the hottest, dustiest part of town is an orphanage run by a female person nasty enough to scare night into day. She goes by the name of Mrs. Sump, although I doubt there ever was a Mr. Sump on account of she looks like something the cat drug in and the dog wouldn't eat. I heard that Mrs. Sump doesn't much like seeing them orphans having any fun, so she puts them to scrubbing floors with toothbrushes. Even the ittiest, bittiest little orphan, sweetness. So one day, Sweetness hit the road. I found out right away because Mrs. Sump came busting into Loopy Lil's saloon hollering like a banshee. Sheriff, she yelled, that's me. That provoking twerp, I mean that dear child, Sweetness, done escaped. I mean disappeared. And I'm fit to be tied worrying about that poor thing, all pink and helpless, wandering lost on the plains and stepping on scorpions and falling into holes and such. You gotta bring her back alive, or I mean safe, before she runs into Coyote Pete. That did it. Scorpions were one thing, but Coyote Pete is as mean as an acre of rattlesnakes and the toughest, ugliest desperado in the West. So I got on my star and I buckled on my gun belt and headed west. It was hot as blazes. Seemed like the wind was too tired to blow. Then it got hotter. Hours passed and what with the sun beating down on me, I commenced to feel thirsty. That was when I realized it would have been prudent to bring along some water. After a few more hours, I begun to stagger with the thirst and the next thing I knowed, I was plopped down in the dirt. Fortunately, I was in the shade of a big cactus, so I decided to stay there for a spell to catch my breath. Next thing I know, I felt this cool, delicious water trickling over my tongue. I popped open my eyes, and there, just a shadow against the sun, was little sweetness and her big canteen. As soon as I was watered up enough to make words come out of my mouth, I said, Why, sweetness, thank heaven I've done saved you. And she said, Yes, sir, thank you. That little orphan is just as cute as a speckled pup under a wagon. Now I've come to take you home, says I. I don't want to go home, says she. I'm tired of scrubbing floors with a toothbrush. What can't be cured must be endured, I told her. Now, I thought this was very wise advice, but the orphan didn't seem to think so, because she lit off like she was trying to catch yesterday. This day was going from bad to worse. Now I was going to have to save that orphan again. Also, if you know anything about the desert, you know that when the sun goes down in all its glory, it starts to cool off, and, and then it gets right cold. Also, the snakes come out. So I headed off after sweetness, all a shivering and wishing I'd brought a blanket. I got to feeling a trifle to hungry, too. Seems like I was wandering around among the snakes and rocks for a coon's age till I was so tuckered out that I just curled up against a bush and went to sleep. Pretty soon I commenced to dream that I was home with my own dear mama sitting around the fire all toasty warm and she was cooking up something nice. And then I woke up and there was the orphan and a campfire and little tyke was toasting marshmallows. <laughs> Want one, says she? Well, doesn't that just beat all? Now, looky here, sweetness, I says to her while I was gobbling down them marshmallows. This is the second time I done saved you, and I'd very much appreciate it if you'd stay saved. Now, we're going to mosey on back there to that orphanage right now. Well, I'll be darned if she didn't start to cry. Don't you like me? She asked. Why, sure I do, honey. Ain't I saved you twice? There's nothing to cry about. But she went right on bawling. I ain't got no ma, said she. I ain't got no pa. All I got is Mrs. Sump and a toothbrush. 
Well, there ain't no way to fix that lesson you gets adopted, I explained. And then she smiled up in my face like she was expecting me to say something particular. It was too deep for me. It sure is a dilemma, was all I could come up with to say at which she throwed up her little hands in the air and stomps off into the night. Dang, says I, now you quit that. You really fry my patience. But I was going to bring that little orphan back if it hair-lipped the governor. So there was the sun rising over the plains, and there I was feeling like something that was chewed up and spit out trying to find one little orphan out in the big wild west. Now here come the exciting part. I had gone fur enough to work up a good sweat, so I ambled over to a big rock so I could stand in the shade. That's when I heard the sound, just a little click, like a gun being cocked. I turned around and what did I see but Coyote Pete, loaded for bear and giving me a look that would freeze a cat. I had to think fast. Coyote Pete, I told him, you can see by the star on my chest that I is here to uphold the law. Now you can't go around shooting folks and scaring orphans, and I's here to arrest you. Now it don't seem like he heard what I said, because just as cool as you please, he aimed his six-shooter right at my big silver star. Listen here, hamster brain, I says. You're riding for a fall. You put down that there gun or I'm going to knock you into the middle of next week. I'm going to snatch you bald-headed. I'm going to lock you up and throw away the key. And you know what he done? He made a sound like thunk and fell over backwards, laid out cold like a sack of feed. I scared him that bad. And who would show up just then but little sweetness? She took off her hair ribbons and we tied that varmint up bulletproof and pig tight. Now, sweetness, I told her, I ain't having no more of this running away. You can't go roaming around this here prairie with outlaws all over the place. It's too dangerous. How many times has I got to save you? If you was as smart as you is brave, you could figure out how to save me for good, she said, looking at me right in the eye. There we stood having a little staring contest. What you leading up to, says I. Think, says she. So I chewed on it a while longer. Do it have something to do with adopting? You're getting it, she says. And then I started to get kind of pretty picture up in my head regarding me and little sweetness and a couple of rocking chairs by the fire. Well, sweet child, I says to her, I knows that I is a rough character, but if you was, would agree to it, I could adopt you. Pa, said she, and she fell on me like grandma on a chicken snake. Then me and Sweetness rolled that varmint all the way back to town. Now here come the ending. That very day I done signed them adoption papers. And then that precious child told me about the seven other orphans and how their toothbrushes was worn down to little nubs with all that scrubbing. So I adopted them too. As for Coyote Pete, we put him in jail and I got a big reward for bringing that varmint to justice. After a few years, they let him out, and they put him in the custody of a parole officer. This was none other than Mrs. Sump, who, as you can see, was out of the orphan business. And I don't know how she done it, but she got that desperado to marry her. And now all he does is scrub that floor. And I can tell you, he jumps when she hollers frog. And that's the truth. The end. Again, this was the story Saving Sweetness, written by Diane Stanley and illustrated by G. Brian Karras. I do hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed reading it to you, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye, Jefferson.